Before we start this show, just a word from our sponsor. 20 by 20 Apparel. Founded in 2015, 20 by 20 Apparel brings original tributes to pro wrestling's classic arenas, moments, and events. They look to spotlight the bloopers, bleeps, and body slams along with the biggest, smallest, strangest, and strongest that pro wrestling has had to offer. Along with their awesome line of pro wrestling apparel, they do offer many services. In the world of wrestling, there are hundreds of shirts, promotions, flyers, social media accounts, and ads. Don't get lost in the sea of parody shirts and display fonts. They can provide professional graphic design services at a reasonable price. 20 by 20 also hand screen prints all the tees in-house. If you would like to discuss possible run of tees, posters, koozies, foam fingers, or whatever, drop them a line. Go to 20 by 20 apparel. That's the number 20 X, the number 20 apparel.com. Now let's get to the show. Fresh is the word. I'm Jim Duggan, got long wood for plenty hoes. I keep it fresher than fresh, but you already know. You suck as bummy, I'm money, I got a ton of flows. My weed loud like a motherfucking thunder roll. Your shit quiet like you ballin' on a budget though. We see your kicks and we laugh and yell the what it goes. You see me shining like a suit on puffy. You know my grind and shit is too strong, buddy. That's why the dude call money. I be stuntin' like it's nothing at all. Cause it's nothing to me, it's probably something to y'all. Trying to smoke like me, then come and fuck with your dog. Got a closet full of kicks, you can't cop it the mall. And I'm fresher than the freshest, you can tell it's in my essence. Bitch, you see the way I'm rapping? Yes, I do this shit to death. I tell I'm running out of breath. I tell somebody cut a check. But either way, you know it's fresh. But either way, you know it's fresh. Fresh. We fresh. 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 Fresh, God damn it, we fresh. Welcome to the Fresh of the Word podcast. I'm your host, Kelly K. Fresh Frazier, and this is episode 98. And the guest for this episode is Ashley Adler Coro, co founder of Can You Hear Me, a nonprofit organization that works with musicians to raise awareness, take action, and provide a supportive, empowering community for teens struggling with issues such as mental health, bullying, and peer pressure. Can You Hear Me? most notably partnered with the main stage bands on the Vans Warp Tour this year and over the past few years for signings, donating all proceeds to Music Cares, specifically for musicians and their families who struggle with mental health. During our conversation, we talked about how Can You Hear Me was established, what sort of conversations they have with teens, how they're able to reach out to teens, and the artists they've worked with, among many other things. So let's get on to the interview with Ashley Adler Coro from Can You Hear Me? So you're the co-founder of Can You Hear Me? Please uh, tell us how it got started and why you established it. Yeah, so Can You Hear Me is basically a safe online platform where teens and young adults can go on and share their struggles or anything they're going through. Um, and we provide resources and then there's a closed Facebook group where they can get peer to peer support from different kids from all over the world, really. And they're in there just kind of sharing with each other different strategies they use to get through things and cope with things. We really wanted to meet kids where they're at, which is the internet and give them a place that's free from from bullying and judgment and all the negativity that the inter- internet tends to have. And um, we started this organization because about 14 years ago, we lost my cousin to suicide and he was only 18 and he struggled immensely, but no one really knew. He wasn't talking about it. He was making artwork that was really dark, but none of us knew any of the signs or knew what to look for because we had never lost anybody that way. And um, so when he died, we kind of have been tra- had been trying to create something or do something to help other people not go through what he went through. So my mom and I came up with this and just decided to go for it. And we've been going ever since 2015 and have been on Warp Tour and South by Southwest, just trying to reach as many kids as possible. 
In between the time that your cousin committed suicide and before you started, can you hear me? Was there anything that you were involved in that you uh, did that kind of helped you prep to uh, start this? Yeah, we worked with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Um, I had done many, many projects on suicide prevention and education and mental health. Um, we worked. At, I worked at a treatment center. My mom worked for a treatment center. Um, we. I had tried to do things in my high school, but they wouldn't let me really. I. I wanted to fundraise for the Mer American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and. Um, sell like wristbands and just talk about it. And they wouldn't let me talk about it in school because they said talking about it created it. And, you know, I wasn't allowed to do that. And so, um, you know, I got involved in different ways. I got involved a lot in music and tried to go that route and kind of, you know, I dove into music as a way to, I guess, you know, get through what I was going through. So, and I worked with other nonprofits that dealt with music. Um, so we've been trying, but there was never really anything that really seemed to work out until we were like, you know what, we're just going to do it ourselves and we'll, we'll do it the way we want to do it. And we'll, we'll reach the kids and we'll talk to the kids. And it's been such a healing process. I think for me anyway, to be able to help these kids to get through what they're struggling with because I struggled and I know my cousin struggled. So before starting this organization, with all the things that you were doing beforehand, was there any part of that where you saw a little bit of a nugget of like, okay, these people are actually helping or this could um, actually work and you were like, maybe let's go down this route and do it a little bit better? Yeah, so I definitely saw like to write love in our arms. That was a huge one for me when I was growing up. I followed them all the time and I was like, you know, I want to do something like them. They were a huge inspiration and heart support, um, is another organization that deals with mental health and the music industry. And so seeing them do things like that, I was like, you know, there's, there's never enough, you know, there's never too much and there's never enough out there. So I wanted to kind of create something that we could get behind and, and put our heart and soul and what we went through into, and, you know, everybody's experiences are different. So if, a kid reaches out to us, you know, it doesn't mean they can't also reach out to heart support and Tola. It's just, we're just different. We have different things and different backgrounds. So I definitely saw it out there. I saw that it worked. I just wanted to do it as well and be another resource. How important is it to sort of have a community of different organizations that pretty much have a common goal, but have their own or sort of their own sort of niche? I think it's massively important because like I said, everyone's different and what works for me may not work for somebody else, you know, just because, you know, I think that therapy works doesn't mean that somebody else will find therapy useful. So it's the same thing with nonprofit organizations or organizations that deal with mental health or suicide awareness. You know, we all have the same goal, which is to help people but we all just go about it just a little differently. So it's all about whatever works for you. And I tell our kids that all the time. I'm like, even if you find that, can you hear me? Is that isn't working for you per se? There's so many other organizations out there. Please find one because we all want to help and we all want to be here for you and listen to you. Do you uh, keep in contact, keep in touch with other organizations uh, that, you know, are going down the same path as you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we definitely talked with Heart Support a ton and to write love in our arms a ton. Um, I know there's a voice for the, just out on Warp Tour, there's a voice for the innocent. They're great. Hope for the day. Also does suicide prevention. Um, and while we're out there, we're all just helping each other out. And, you know, even if I find somebody at our tent that has gone through or is going through, you know, addiction issues, to write love in our arms does a lot with addiction and they send people to treatment centers all the time. So, you know, I have them reach out and we, I list all of them on our website as well as other resources. So we definitely stay in contact and we all know that we're out there for the same goal. What is it about music that is such a good sort of 
thing to latch on to sort of help with the, this this cause? I think that when people listen to music, they are taken out of whatever they're going through at that moment. So I know for me as a teenager, when I was struggling, I just put headphones in and I could just escape. It was a it was an escape for me, and the music brought me somewhere else where I connected with it. So I think that using music as a way to reach people is important because it's kind of a common thing that something that we all have in common is just like a love for music. I don't, I don't think I've ever met somebody that's like, I just hate music. Like I don't, I don't want to listen to anything, you know? (laughs) And and if so, then we'll connect on a different level. But I, that music is just something that connects all of us. And, you know, when you're sitting at a concert with, you know, 15,000 strangers, you feel united and you feel like you all belong together. And I think that's important. So that's why we chose to go down the music route and connect through musicians and through music. When you, when you were younger, you know, when you just sort of dived into music, what were you listening to? Um, as a teenager, I listened to a lot of Paramore, um, I listened to All Time Low, Under Oath, The Used. I was, I listened to anything that was on the cover of AP Magazine <laughs> I was listening to. I, my walls were just covered with the covers of AP Magazine. Um, as I got older, I started to listen to the Beatles a lot. I you know, went backwards and started right. listening to like classic music. And um, now I'm more so listening to like indie music, Beatles definitely all the time. Um, but as a teenager, it was, it was more that like pop punk because they were speaking about things that I was going through and they were, it, it showed that other people went through it and it wasn't just me. Cause you know, sometimes when you're depressed or you're struggling, you have these thoughts of like, you know, everything's so terrible or you're going through a bad breakup or something like, you know, to hear that other people have gone through that is so reassuring that you're going to be okay because especially an artist because you know that they're doing okay and you know they're singing about it so i think being able to hear music like that and hear lyrics like that it's just i was able to connect yeah during that time were you able to sort of use that music to sort of meet other people and really sort of realize that hey there's other people outside of just this artist too that are going through this stuff yeah, I'm going to age myself a little right now because <laughs> with when I was a teenager, I connected a lot on like MySpace and yeah. pure volume was like a huge thing. I, I used to talk to bands and there was tons of communities on MySpace and pure volume. And that's where I really heard most of this music. You know, I was listening to like Panic at the Disco's demos on MySpace. And I mean, kids now will be like, well, what's MySpace? But um, <laughs> I definitely connected with a lot of people. I connected with a lot of the musicians directly back then because they were just starting out or, you know, there wasn't this like crazy social media that made people, you know, not accessible. And I made a lot of really good friends in my community, my school and, um, you know, on the Internet as well because of it. How did sort of making those connections help out with, the things that you would do in the future, you know, especially, can you hear me? Um, I think it just was eye opening to me. So I was like, this can happen. You can meet people and it not be like a weird thing. Like you can connect with people on the internet and really make like lifelong friends and it's okay. You know, as long as it's safe and it just showed me that the music community and the mental health community and just, people in general have this like innate need to connect with each other. So creating this organization, it just made sense to make it a safe community for people to be able to talk to each other, not just to us because so many times adults will hear kids are struggling. They're like, well, let me tell you what you have to do instead of just being like, Hey, talk to each other. You guys are struggling with the same thing. Like we're still here. We're still going to put our two cents in if you want to hear it. And, you know, give each other advice. What, how has this worked for you? And they, they literally amaze me every day because, you know, a kid in Australia will be like, I'm struggling at 
midnight and somebody in the U.S. will be like, I'm here for you. Talk to me, you know, like, <laughs> and it's just incredible to see. And they've made friends with each other and they're meeting each other at Warp Tour, you know, and through us and they've made lifelong friends. So I think it's important. Even though, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, I feel like even in the past few years, there's been some amazing strides in regards to perception of, of uh, mental health in our society. You know, what have you uh, experienced even for the past you know, few years doing Can You Hear Me in regards to uh, just the strides that have been done in regards to perception of mental health? I think that um, people are talking about it more. And because they're talking about it and it's not being like shunned to talk about right. that it's, it opens up so many doors because before if you had a mental health issue and you talked about it, you were like so weird and uh, like the outcast, you know, and now it's like people are opening up and talking about it and it's like, okay, you're, st we're starting to realize that more and more people struggle than you think. And it's not just one type of person. It's everybody. Everybody's got something they've struggled with or struggle with currently. And I think the fact that society is now a little, a little more accepting of it and acknowledging it at least, that it's getting easier to help people because people are more likely to open up where before they wouldn't and you'd never know. Like my cousin, you know, they – we just didn't know. So if you don't talk about it, you can't expect people to know what's going on. And in the same regards, if you don't educate yourself about it, you don't know what to look for. Right. You, um, yeah, Can You Hear Me has been a part of the, the Warp Tour the past few years. And how did you first link up with uh, the Warp Tour? So I worked for an organization in 2015 called Music Saves Lives and I went out on the Warp Tour with them. Uh, they were focusing mainly on blood donation and um, bone marrow registry. And so I was out on the Warp Tour with them and had been doing stuff for them behind the scenes for Warp Tour and had always been a Warp Tour kid. I'd gone since 2005. And so I got to see firsthand these kids out there and they would come up to our tent, which had nothing to do with mental health, and just want to talk because they saw somebody who they connected with a little bit or, you know, for whatever reason. And I, I saw kids out there with scars on their arms and, like, you know, just, just pain or, you know, whatever it was. And for that one day, they were able to just be okay and um, just enjoy the music. And so when I got off Warp Tour, I – was talking with my mom and she had this idea of, can you hear me? And I was like, yes, perfect. Let's do it. And this is what we have to do. We have to go on warp tour because this is, this is where the kids are. You know, these are, these kids are struggling and warp tours in front of hundreds of thousands of kids every summer. And this is how we're going to reach them. And these are the bands that they're listening to. And not to say that there aren't, you know, millions of other kids that are listening to other types of music out there. Right. It's just, Warp Tour is that one festival that really was in front of so many different kids all over the country, all over the world. So that it just made sense. Once you, uh, you know, started, you know, hitting the Warp Tour, you know, what was some of the first, you know, experiences that you had, you know, with your organization? Um, meeting some of our kids that we had talked with online and had been like, you know, you helped me so much. And they would come out to our tent, seeing them face to face was unreal. Um, having kids walk up to our tent and just say, you know, you helped or, you know, because of your organization, you know, I was able to come out to my parents or I now I'm seeking therapy or whatever it is, or I'm safe from self-harm. It was like, it, it made such an impact on me because you know, prior to us going out, my grandfather and I were talking and he was like, you know, what, what, how do you define success in a nonprofit organization? Like you're not making money. It's not the point. How do you define success in something like this? And I was like, just, just helping one kid, just one kid. That's success. If we save one kid's life, like that's, that's success to me. And that, that's everything. And having 
tons and tons of kids come up to us and say that we helped them or saved them is just unreal. What sort of information do you provide during those stops on the warp tour? Um, we have resource cards out there that just have all the text lines, hotlines, um, different websites. Like we have to write love on our arms on there. We've got American foundation for suicide prevention. There's, um, the Trevor project, just all kinds of resources that they can reach out to because we're not therapists. We're just people. Um, and we're just there as kind of a guide to help them. So our resource cards have information about what we are, our Facebook group where they can talk to each other and then just different resources that are out there and, you know, crisis lines and things like that. Yeah, that's a good point you just brought up that is that you're not you're not therapists. Like what can what can people if they want to be involved in sort of demything the stigma of mental health? What can they do if they're not, you know, therapists or doctors? They're not going to school to become that. What can people do to be a part of this movement? Honestly, just talk about it. Shedding light on it. I mean, sharing resources the biggest thing is like, you know, whenever something major happens or there's some major crisis, us and Trey Love Our Arms and all the other nonprofits, we always put out resources. So like the crisis text line or um, for whatever it is, I know like when the shooting happened in Las Vegas at the music festival, we all put out if you're if you're struggling, if you're feeling depressed because of this or you need somebody to talk to, here's the crisis line. Um, we're here if you need somebody to just listen and not give therapeutic advice, but we will just always, we will always listen. I think it's important for people to just, even though, even if you're not therapist, you feel like there's nothing you can do. Just talk about it. Just, you know, make it okay for other people around you to talk about it and, you know, really listen to people when they're, you know, speaking. When you're when you're on these dates on the warp tour, you know, meeting people, what is like the the regular the what's the most con- like what are the conversations you're most having with these kids? Um a lot of kids struggle with like bullying or their perceptions of themselves. Um we've dealt with a lot of people who are you know, coming out to their families or trying to come out uh conversations on tour are, are very much about like depression and anxiety and um, how to overcome that. And we just try and give our, you know, what we've gone through and what's helped us and, and then connect them with other people that are going through that as well. But most of the conversations are very like, they're upbeat because they, they feel like they now have a place and there's a lot of hope where they didn't feel that prior to coming out to work for and talking to some of the organizations. Right. When, when you go to the, you know, you go into so many cities all across the, you know, the, the U S Canada, and you're seeing all these kids, you know, whether they come up and talk to you or not, you know, you're seeing people of all sorts of ages, races, and, um, you seeing a lot of them just having fun there, you know, you know, what goes kind of goes through your mind when you're just seeing everything that's going on at like the warp tour and, and you're just like, you know, what can, you know, what can we do? Like what goes through your mind during that whole time? Um, I'm trying to, my main focus on warp tour is getting as many resource cards out to as many people as possible and talking to as many people as possible. And there's also a fine line where like I've seen um, different organizations in the past that, you know, a kid will be having a really good day and they'll come up to a tent and they'll have scars on their arms and the person in, in that organization's tent will say, you know, let's talk about them. And maybe, you know, the biggest thing that we stress is like, you don't want to point stuff out like that. Like, yeah. You don't want to yeah. pull people in and be like, you have issues you like, talk to me about them, you know? So just connecting on whatever level it is that they're on. So if somebody's having a great day, I want to know why. Like, I want to talk to them about what made their day great and what bands they're listening to. And I want to know about them and get to know them. And that's really, you know, what we're about is 
not just being like, here's a resource card. I'll never talk to you again. <laughs> right. It's like, right. I, we're trying to follow through with as many people as possible and follow up with them and get to know them. Like all the kids in our, our, nom, in our uh, Facebook group, you know, we know them, we talk to them daily. And, you know, in fact, one of our first kids that ever shared their story, Caitlin, she designed one of our merch items that was out on the warp tour this summer. So we like to give back and give them, you know, opportunities to do things and get their messages out there because they all have something to say and it's important. And so out on tour, you know, just seeing where people are at and getting to know them, that's, that's our biggest goal. How do you, like you just mentioned, Caitlin, uh, how do you sort of, you know, open up that opportunity for these kids that contact you to also be involved in the cause? Yeah, we're constantly looking for different ways to get them involved. So right now we're, um, we did this thing on this past Warped Tour and the first Warped Tour we were on with Adobe Radio called Misfit Mondays. And it was basically a video series where we updated from tour and what we were doing. And this past year we got some of our team reps involved and they shared their stories. Um, and now moving forward, we're going to be doing a video a month and we're going to involve our kids. So I wrote in our group today and I was like, big news, you know, um, we want you involved. Adobe wants you involved. We want to get to know you. Like let's, you know, we want your videos and your submissions. And now you get to be a part of this and you get to share whatever it is, your artwork, your music, your story, a message you want to get across. So we try to do things like that. We try and involve them in merch ideas, anything we do involves them. So if we're going to make a move, if we're going to go or thinking about going into a festival, we talk to them first because this organization's for them. It's about them. And we want it to be created by them because, you know, if we're just sitting behind a screen, like doing whatever we want and it doesn't pertain anything to what they want, then how helpful are we being? Right. So <laughs> really everything we do down to the very last merch design or, you know, our resource cards is from their minds and, you know, something that they wanted. We're constantly doing polls and, and wanting to know what they want to see. What's the difference been like? What's sort of like the energy that's brought to it all when you see like these things that are made by the people that, you know, originally hit you up? Um, well, with Caitlin and her, her shirt, I mean, it sold out, um, before tour was even over and people get excited that they're buying something that was created by a real person who struggled and went through our organization and is now a mentor to other people. You know, they get excited about it. And I, you know, I constantly would message her on Facebook cause she's from the UK and I'd be like, hey, we sold, you know, 200 more of your shirts or like <laughs> and got to update her on those things. And she sees her shirts on some of her favorite bands like Don Broco or Issues, you know, and they're wearing her shirts in these videos that they're posting on their Instagrams. And, you know, it's just it's an unreal feeling for us to be able to do something like that for her and to get her artwork out there. So that's what we try and do as much as humanly possible with everything and with all of our kids. Since starting, can you hear me? Do, um, can you pinpoint sort of like that first sort of, I guess, holy shit moment where you just <laughs> kind of, you know, felt like, Oh, this might actually be something that is going to work. And is something that might be, you know, we might be able to do for a long time. Um, yeah. So we started, we, we put it out on Facebook first. We started our Facebook page and then the first couple days we started to see like this influx of people messaging us. And then it was like, Oh my God, we are constantly answering. My mom and I literally <laughs> had to take shifts and one of us would stay up all night where the other one would stay up all day just right. responding to messages. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like, this is working. This is like, we did something right because we had initially put out this video and it was a video my mom and I made where it was like, it was a very probably poor quality, like recording of our phone screens. And it was like, we we're trying to portray a text messaging conversation back and forth between a mom and a daughter. Yeah. And the daughter was like, you know, I, I'm at this party and, um, I don't feel safe or whatever. And then she was, her next 
response was like, um, or her next text was going to be like, there's people drinking. I please come get me. And then the mom already answered before she could respond and was like, well, that's fine. But like, you still need to be back at 11. Like I, you know, your, your schedule and whatever else. And it was basically that like idea that sometimes parents like respond before they even have a chance to listen to what the kid's saying. And here it was, this kid was trying to tell their parent, like, I'm struggling and I'm not doing well. And like, there's all these things going on here and like, please come get me. And before she could even get that out, the mom was already like, well, you know, you always do this. You're going to school tomorrow, like too bad. And it got thousands of views and people, kids were like, yes, this relates to me. I relate so much. This happens every day. Right. And then they were from that, you know, that's how we got so many kids in initially. And we have videos of them being like, ah, oh, I was scrolling the internet at 3 a.m. and I saw this video and I was like, what is this? And reached out and then now they're, they've been with us for the past three years. So it was in that moment where we were just getting these like floods of messages being like, like this means something to me. Like, what can I do? How, like, please talk to me. And it was, it was then that we were like, okay. Like we're doing something right. We need to keep going. Like this can be huge. And then another moment was on tour the first year. It was such a struggle. We were new and we, everything was, you know, breaking. Our buses were breaking and it was hot. And we just got this message randomly on Facebook in the middle of the night. And it was just like, hi, you help. And period, like nothing else. And I was just like, I just like started crying because it was so simple yeah. But to hear that was in the massive chaos was like, OK, like this is why we do this. Being that, you know, can you hear me is, you know, so much a part of music, you know, what um, what what, you know, music artists or bands have you worked with over the, the past few years? Uh, the first band that we worked with was As It Is. So Patty Walters shared his story about how he struggles because he's straight edge and just the friends he's lost and the people he's, you know, come in contact with because of it. And, um, we worked with, um, from ashes to new, we worked with neck deep. We did a bunch of signings last year when Chester Bennington died and we donated all the money to music cares, which is another organization that helps families of musicians and musicians who are struggling. Um, we worked with this rapper, his name's Futuristic and Watsky. Um, American authors worked with us. We just worked with a ton of different people. Water parks this past summer, a ton. Um, and Don Broco. Just like any band that's message is that of helping others, we've tried to reach out to. And for the most part, they pretty much want to help. When there's a when there's a passing like someone like uh, Chester Bennington, how does that sort of affect you and the organization and everybody that's involved in it? It's definitely hard because um, you know people who haven't lost somebody to suicide or even somebody that they care about, even if they don't know them personally, it's a struggle. So we definitely see a lot of people coming to us that are like incredibly upset or affected by it that way. It also opens up conversation a lot at that moment because now people are like, oh, my gosh, like this happened to somebody who seemingly had everything. And, you know, so it starts that conversation up again. And it happens, you know, more often than not, you know, Avicii, the, you know, the DJ, when he died, it opened up so many conversations and Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington. And so anytime that happens, there's a, you know, just mass upsetness but then there's also mass conversation so it affects us in the way that we see a lot more kids coming and talking to us at those points and it also opens up a lot of doors for us to be able to talk to more people about this what do you you know what do you hope what is your plans your hopes for the future with your organization and just mental health in general so we're going to be going out on the high school nation tour which is a tour that goes into high schools around the country and does like a two hour mini music festival. And then they leave the school with a brand new recording studio. We did that for a week last year. 
we'll be doing that. My goal is to try and go and speak in schools. I'm trying very hard to fundraise and put together what would look like a high school slash college tour where we just go and talk to the kids and, you know, have workshops and activities and just talk about mental health and get it out there and then leave the school with some sort of program or club that deals with mental health or some sort of curriculum that, you know, because they don't talk about it in schools. They'll talk about health all day and how you need to eat healthy and eat right and whatever else, but they don't talk about mental health right. because it's, right. it's, I don't know, they just haven't created the curriculum for it. But I want to go and talk face-to-face with as many kids as possible because that's what works. And I want to see changes in the way people view mental health and I want to see more people talking about it. In regards to just sort of, I guess, funding and legislation and all that type of stuff, what do you feel like needs to be done in in our nation in regards to mental health? I think, well, we went to this rally called the Unite to Face Addiction Rally a couple years ago, and the Surgeon General spoke on addiction and how it is a disease and um, it's a mental health issue. And I just think that, you know, there's all these laws around everything, you know, and there's people like to control everything, but they don't, it's all like superficial things. Like, I don't know, but like, I feel like there needs to be something that says that anybody should be able to access mental health care and services because the fact that you may, you don't have insurance or you don't have money should not affect whether or not you should be able to get mental health services. I mean, right. it's just like anything else. And it's just not really viewed that way. Like when we worked for the treatment center, there were, you know, insurances that were like, yeah, we can maybe get them in there in 30 days. And it's like, if they had a terminal illness, you would be putting them in immediately into a hospital bed. So why? Because they have a mental health issue. Do they now have to wait 30 days? Like this sometimes is life or death. Right. And it's just not viewed the same. And I think that that's a big thing that needs to be changed. How many, you know, even though maybe you're gearing a lot of this towards the younger kids, how many older, you know, you know, men and women actually hit you up uh, through the website or whatever about their mental health? All the time. And we talk to them. Um, it's, our group, our Facebook group is most, is just teens and young adults because if we started, you know, allowing adults in there, it could get tricky. Right, um, right. But all the time we have people talking to us and just like, how can I get involved? What can I do? And we've had people come out and volunteer for us at Warp Tour and we stay in touch with people and figure out different ways that they can still be involved, maybe just not in the Facebook group or, you know, we send them in the direction of, a resource that would be best for them. But we never turn anybody away just because of how old they are, what they're going through. Right. Yeah. I re like, it's, it's kind of crazy though. Like, um, it's kind of like the impact that warp tour can actually have on someone. doesn't matter what the age, uh, I've only been going to the warp tour to the covering it for the past uh, few years. I don't know why before I never went to it. I think I was just my stupid, like listening to other people being like, you know, oh, just warp to her. Uh, just, uh. Yeah. Um, but I finally started going and I had a blast. But the one thing I would say about warp tours last year, when I was covering it, I was interviewing a bunch of people and I was having some really deep conversations with, um, artists about, you know, their lives and stuff. Um, I know I had interviewed, uh, Layla Khan, the lead singer of, um, uh, Sonic Boom six and we were talking about her, her sobriety and my sobriety, and we, you know, we really connected on that. And it was funny, like after uh, after last year's, I kind of got this feeling. I'm like, okay, I want to work on my mental health more. But I, I can really pinpoint that day is like I want to work on my my uh, my mental health more after that. And I started going to therapy shortly after, and it's been you know done wonders. So I definitely know like the sort of the effect that uh that the warp tour can have on on kids and people. Yeah, it definitely connects people and I think that's what's most important. It's even if 
you go and you're, you're like, oh, I don't really like any of these bands. You never know who you're going to meet there. Right. And who you're going to connect with. And that was the beauty of it is that it connected so many people, you know, like minded, but from, you know, all walks of earth. And it just was such a good community for people, I think. And that, you know, that's the importance of things like that is being able to connect through a mutual love of something. And it, it opens up doors. I know I did an interview with a radio station not too long ago, and I was talking to them about losing my cousin and my brother, who's a recovering addict. And um, one of the guys opened up and was talking about his family. And it just went down this whole other path away from, you know, just because we connected on that level. And, and it was great because, you know, so often people don't want to talk about it because it's heavy. And, right. you know, they want, you know, rainbows and butterflies and happiness and some life is just not like that. So, you know, being able to connect with somebody because it was through Warped Tour and we were doing an interview and, you know, I was able to connect with them. It was so huge, you know, and it made a difference. As we, as we, you know, uh, kind of wind down this, um, this interview, what is, you know, if there was something that anybody listening to this interview, some nugget of knowledge could extract from your life and what you're doing and apply it to their own life, what would that be? Um, as far as like mental health goes, just talk about it. Honestly, just reach out, talk, whoever you feel most comfortable, most comfortable with, talk to them, talk to us, talk to a friend, family member, whoever, just talk about it. If you're struggling, talk about it. Um, pertaining to just life in general, my like huge motto for everyone is like, if you want to do something, figure out how to do it and just do it. Because literally I gave up wanting to work in a like corporate environment and everything else and to do this, because this is a passion for me. And if you're passionate about something, you will never work a day in your life because you will love what you're doing and just go after it like full force and take risks. And I always like to end uh, all my interviews with the same question. Who, who would be someone that's been a part of your life or career that I could realistically interview that would have some great stories or lessons to talk about? Um, probably my mom. We do pretty much everything together. Her and I are the founders. And I mean, I look up to her immensely and she's the reason why I know that you going after things, you know, after what you want ends up in, you know, good things because as a kid, you know, she went back to college when I was young and she became a, an attorney and worked so hard every day. So I looked up to her and knew that that was a possibility that you could make your dreams come true, true by just going after them. So Great. probably my mom. Great. Um, if anybody wants find out more information about can you hear me what's you know what you guys are doing where can they go online um our website is cyhm.org uh we're on instagram twitter facebook um our instagram and twitter is just cyhm org and facebook is just can you hear me and then you can always just email me my email is ashley at cyhm.org Great. It's been great talking with you. I definitely wanted to uh, connect with uh, organizations like yours for the podcast. So it's been great talking with you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So that was my interview with Ashley Adler Coro from Can You Hear Me? More information about Can You Hear Me is in the show notes for this episode at freshisthepodcast.com. And now let's get on to the fresh pick of the week. This episode's pick is the new single and video from the South Wales pop punk band Junior titled Day of the Dead. The three piece band consists of Matt Adderd on guitar and vocals, C. Martin on drums, and Mark Andrews on guitar and vocals. And for those in the know, Mark Andrews is also a pro wrestler who is most notably a member of the UK based Progress Wrestling and also a part of WWE's UK brand. Not only does Day of the Dead totally rock, but as a song that deals with loss, the video only intensifies the emotions of the story being told. Day of the Dead is a follow-up from their album from last year, Junior Land. They're about to hit the road in the UK for a string of dates with some of their favorite bands. For more information on those dates, 
for those listening in the UK, you can always go to musicofjunior.com. Uh, all this will be linked in the show notes for this episode on the website. Now, before we get out of here, just want to remind you of a few things. Uh, we're coming up on episode 100 of Fresh of the Word. But before we get to 100, later on this week, I'll be dropping episode 99 with comic book author and illustrator Dan Doherty. And we'll talk about his uh, newer comics, uh, Cosa Nostra and Floppy Cop. So that'll be coming later on this week. And then, as I've already already announced online, episode 100 is going to be with Brooklyn hip-hop legend, Master Ace. And then episode 101 is going to be, be with Detroit techno legend, Carl Craig. I'm super excited that uh, these episodes are uh, coming, coming your way. It was awesome to talk with everybody. Uh, it definitely is a huge milestone. So we're almost there, almost at 100. Before we get out of here, I definitely want to give a shout out to Knox Money, Bang Belushi, and Foulmouth for the theme music for Fresh of the Word. And also, if you want to support the podcast, you can always go to freshofthepodcast.com, share any of the links that you see on the website and any of your social media. And then you can also subscribe to Fresh of the Word on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Mixcloud, Google Play, and TuneIn. Just type in Fresh of the Word, and it should come up pretty easy. Uh, hit the subscribe button or the follow button or whatever it says on there. And definitely uh, keep uh, keep in touch with uh, Fresh of the Word that way. And if you can, give a, a rating and a review, especially on Apple Podcasts. That will definitely help out the show. And if I do see that you uh, leave a comment, I'll definitely shout you out on a future episode. You can follow me online on Twitter and Instagram at Kelly Omega Fresh, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash kfresh. And you can follow Fresh of the Word online on Twitter at FITW Podcast, on Instagram at Fresh of the Word Podcast, and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Fresh of the Podcast. So that's it for another show. Another Fresh of the Word is in the books. Goodbye and good night. Fresh is the word.